Last week, Joe Burrow went ham. The Bills finally found a field goal they liked, and several games went to overtime. Though none got there as thrilling as Drake May's touchdown pass with zeros on the clock. Welcome to Shut Up Football. I'm Jeff Stoltzfus. That's Kevin. If you had eyes in the back of your head, you couldn't wear hats. But you wouldn't need to crane your neck to look back at week nine of the NFL season. Welcome to MetLife Stadium, home to a team so depressing, even the cameramen have to get drunk to do it. The Jets were dressed in black, likely having just come from a funeral, weeks one through eight. With no Stefan Diggs or Nico Collins, CJ Stroud struggled, Tank Dell became the go-to option. Hard to stay efficient when your top receiver has the catch radius of a fifth grader. Stroud felt pressure all night, eight sacks, one fumble, and the cool kids made him try vaping. It's like nicotine emailed to your lungs. Rookie Malachi Corley finally saw some action, and I bet he wished he didn't. He dropped the ball just shy of the goal line. That's some premature exhilaration. It was a good play, but he executed it Malachi poorly. I'll be here all night, try the veal. You're embarrassing the fans with bags on their heads. But just like Frankenstein found, a corpse can show life when properly stimulated. Garrett Wilson got a pair of touchdowns. On one, he looked like the Air Jordan logo. It's hard to keep up with the NFL's rules. One shin equals two feet, a butt, or an elbow. Who got drunk and threw darts at a medical textbook? I want that job. I want a boardroom of suits asking me what two feet are worth. I'm sick of doing it on Craigslist. It was an amazing catch in the back of the end zone, and a surprise to Malachi Corley. There's a back? Devontae Adams got into the action too, putting the game out of reach late and presenting the question, Dear sweet merciful God, what has this man done to earn Aaron Rodgers' trust? They bonded over more than just Taco Bell. There's bodies somewhere. <laughs> I want to punch you. You're not alone. It was the first victory for interim coach Jeff Albrecht. With any luck, Rodgers will let him sleep indoors tonight. Derek Carr was back from injury and bringing the swagger of an expired can of beans. They called Taysom Hill Inspector Gadget. I assume because he suffers a cartoon amount of violence and he's a shit detective. A more accurate name would have been functional Tim Tebow. Bryce Young was showing progress, both in his throws and his ability to demand flags. With any luck, someday he'll be a decent bridge quarterback. Coach Dave Canales is jacked. He looks like he could beat the shit out of Bryce Young. Xavier Leggett's touchdown celebration is an ode to his horse, Dalla Bill. I had no idea horses knew how to rap. Rookie tight end Jatavian Sanders broke out with 87 yards and took his beef to the sky. Leggett was pickpocketed by cornerback Shamar Jean Charles. Rookie mistake. Next time, keep your valuables in a fanny pack like The Rock. The Saints lost their seventh straight game, and Dennis Allen was fired after. The only thing they won during his tenure was me time during the playoffs. Daniel Jones came in hot, fisting teammates. This game was besmirched at every chance by litigation zebras. Referees are like cats, constantly rubbing their stank just to leave a mark. Daniel Jones fumbled, and they whistled the play dead. You got an itchy mouth whistle, ref. They took points off the board. That's the Giants job. Terry McLaurin was penalized for celebrating a touchdown with Peekaboo. Who are you protecting? Some smooth-brained player who lacks object permanence? If the Giants can't handle that, it's gonna be hell at recess. Daniel Jones had zero yards and one touchdown through a half a play. A curious stat that felt on brand. Oh, oh, I know this. Uh. F. Jaden Daniels, Mary Dan Quinn, Kill Kingsbury. Nailed it. Jones crashed into the end zone like a drunk rhino. You cannot defeat Daniel Jones, except with points. Josh Allen was picked off, but Keon Coleman should get an assist or some kind of demerit. Make him sit to pee for a week, even at the urinal. Allen bounced back, tossing multiple scores, including one to Mac Hollins, who celebrated like a kitty. This game was a sexy back and forth, like strip ping pong. To a dove head first, proving it's hard to learn lessons when you suffered brain trauma. That's right, Tua. You showed that brain who's boss. 
Look at those Bills defenders, caught between their desire to win and their desire not to be featured on a 30 for 30 about Tua. Kicker Tyler Bass nailed a game winner, 61 yards, right down the blowhole. Spirits were up for the Browns, a feeling that quickly evaporated. Justin Herbert was frequently folded like a lawn chair, and every time he was, Jim Schwartz looked abundantly smug about it, only to see Herbert throw a touchdown after. It happened not once, not twice, but two times. Sack smug score, sack smug score. After dealing with Ken Dorsey, Deshaun Watson, and Jameis Winston, Kevin Stefanski should get coach of the year. If for no other reason than not spraying cerebellum on his office drop ceiling, at least get him a subscription to whiskey. Even Forrest Gump got a box of chocolates. The Chargers defense looks strong, led by coordinator, uh, I wanna say, Chet Jiz Hansen, maybe? Jameis Winston threw his first second and third interception of the season. That's what you get for putting an elf on your field that doesn't even have a tree full of cookies. J.K. Dobbins got a couple of scores and O.C. Greg Roman was excited. Oh, that's just a highlighter. Is Jim Harbaugh hurt? Why does he walk like his khakis are filled with two poops and a bag of rocks? Cedric Tillman finally scored late and if it saves even one life in Cleveland, totally worth it. The Patriots were thrilled to see their first round pick back in action. The Titans were led again by Mason Rudolph, AKA SpongeBob Squarejaw. Kill that man. Thank you. Show me those delicious interceptions. They're like yawns. They're contagious. This game was a cure for insomnia until the final seconds of regulation. Drake May had enough time to write his memoirs as he ran in circles, only to toss a prayer to Ramondre Stevenson for a score. It was such an amazing play, it took me several seconds to process what just happened. This boring game just got longer. Overtime, even though each team possessed the charisma and likability of a non-player character, someone had to win this game. Would it be the Titans? Yes, it was the Titans. Ezekiel Elliott was held out of this game for disciplinary reasons. He was missing team meetings and being habitually late, AKA retardy. Oh no, said a career low yards per carry. Why was he late? Was he running to the meetings? Drake London scored early, but he left the game with injury, doomed to the Peloton and spin class with Blaze. McCarthy's new Microsoft Surface commercial looks fucking terrible. Rico Dowdle grabbed one in the end zone, proving if you just give him three to five chances to catch a ball, he might. The Cowboys made a bold decision by faking a punt. They should have faked faking it and then faked their own death. Find a new city and start over. Someplace Jerry will never find us or saddle us with the likes of Jonathan Mingo. Blah, blah. Kirk Cousins had three touchdowns, including one to Ray Ray McLeod of the Clan McLeod. There can be only one. Ah, the Raiders. It gives me no joy to mock you. Your pain is real. The Raiders highlights wouldn't fill a TikTok video. These poor unfortunate bastards brought a can of string cheese to a gunfight. Joe Burrow threw five touchdowns. At least one of them had to be no look. Burrow didn't even look happy at the end. He knows the truth. This is no flex. It's a villain's origin story. Gardner Minshew was benched for Desmond Ritter. Sure, change captains mid-Titanic. We could all use a little ice in our drinks. The Broncos dove into their bag of tricks early, running Philly special on fourth down, and it was Bo Nix with a receiving touchdown. It was also the Broncos' only touchdown of the game. The Ravens dominated and forgot the safe word. Derrick Henry got his 100th and 101st career rushing touchdown. He leads the league in everything that could be led. The first since Jim Brown, and we all know how that ended. Watch your six, Derek. Sean Payton revealed more out of the box thinking after the half. Then we're gonna have to, again, hit some explosives. Ah, terrorism. These coaches had the same number of wins, but seriously, you couldn't find a better picture of Harbaugh? At best, this looks like a yearbook picture of most likely to battle Kylo Ren. The Cardinals scored three touchdowns, but Kyler Murray had none. No abnormal punts, kicks, or odd ball stats. This game barely existed, but points somehow happened. Explain yourself, game. The roof became a main character after it started hailing in the desert. Would they, could they close the roof? It closes slow and quite aloof. 
Tyreek Stevenson, who was sidelined for acting like a dildo last week. They benched him for taunting the fans during the final play that cost them the game. There was another heavy dose of tight end Trey McBride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me more about this roof. The Bears were crushed after a barrage of touchdowns from unexpected players. This game had so many questions. Like, why does the Cardinals logo face one way on their hat and another way on their shirt? What's the update on that roof? What the absolute fuck is happening here? A snot achieving his dreams? I thought that was Jonathan Gannon. Nick Sirianni left a lot of points on the field after going for it on fourth down and failing. Saquon Barkley leaped over a man in reverse. It would have made more sense if he was Spider-Man, and that was his big reveal. In an alternate timeline, he landed on that man's head, becoming the worst hat in history, or worse, ending a man's career and or life after turning him into a human butt plug. He can't see colors anymore, and everything smells like shame. Barkley used to run for touchdowns, now he's just running from himself. Survivor's guilt over giving a permanent part to a man's hair. Don't worry, he came back to Earth. He tripped on a teammate and fumbled the ball from superhero to Mr. Bean in only a few short minutes. The Jaguars returned it for points and celebrated it like it was offense. Nick Sirianni said he'd give away his parking spot if anyone got a turnover. But the Eagles got free. Maybe they can have Doug Peterson's. I got a funny feeling it's about to become available. Geno Smith had a bipolar game, multiple turnovers, seven sacks, but he also threw three touchdowns. It was a huge day for Jackson Jimmy Kimmel. With DK Metcalf out, he became the focal point, collecting all the yards and a couple of scores. Puka Nakua was ejected for taking a swing at a defender. He had to watch the game from the locker room on a tiny ass TV. Worse yet, it didn't get any other channels. Derek Hall used Matthew Stafford like a slip and slide. They called him for roughing. They should have called him for being a good friend. Those things are fun. This game went to overtime. If I wanted to read, I'd have put the closed captions on. This is what money looked like a hundred years ago. Pick a side. Matthew Stafford tricked Demarcus Robinson into the game ceiling touchdown. He promised him lunch meats. It's like they say, cojones before balones. This game was like a good shoe fly pie or toddler's diaper, soggy bottom. Jared Goff found Amon Ross St. Brown for a score, who celebrated with his signature move, a pencil. Jacobs ran free and picked up chunk yardage. In between, they were wiping him down like he just came out of a car wash. Brian Branch was kicked out of the game just because he tried to murder a guy. He flipped off the fans on his way out the door, which is such a Brian thing to do. Oh, I'm sorry, did they throw your head at Bo Melton? Why don't the refs have coats? Is it because they're not people? Mother Nature was undoing the slimming nature of vertical stripes. Shit, I should have had this laminated. Aaron Glenn sent an intern to rip the windshield wipers off his car so he could see. Talk dirty to me, Kevin Burkhard. I'm looking for a little hole and then it gets smacked. Well, Tom Brady sure looks nice and dry, and like I could open a can of tuna with that sharp ass chin. Whatever the Colts were looking for Joe Flacco to provide, they didn't find it. Zero touchdowns, two turnovers. Draw me like one of your French girls. Though to be fair, there's more blame to go around. Flacco stuck the ball in Jonathan Taylor's belly and he fumbled. Whoopsie poodle. Sam Darnold had his own problems. Three turnovers. He looked so mad he could eat a gingerbread man. That's cannibalism. Darnold fumbled after getting smacked in the face. Unfortunately, his face isn't the face of the NFL, so no one cared. Uh, I left my cell phone in the dishwasher again. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Justin Jefferson showed off his diamond teeth. Neat. He must have the floss with an adamantium garrot. Call me crazy, but I'd rather not take the chance of being mugged with a pair of pliers. My number one fear is street dentistry. The Vikings plastered Joe Flacco's unbejeweled grill, making him regret ever leaving that couch. Shit, man, I just wanted to come back for the camaraderie and some grab ass. The Bucks were down a few receivers, so they leaned on their ground game. Rashad White scored and threw the ball into the stands. Whoever caught that ball, congratulations. You just joined the Bucks in three receiver sets. Patrick Mahomes was making good work of DeAndre Hopkins. He was making wow catches and got a pair of scores. Finally, Chiefs fans have something to cheer about. 
Baker Mayfield has forged a major connection with Fabric of Our Lives, Kate Otten, a man who overcame great obstacles like being born with wax lips and Lego hair. They interviewed Coach Bowles at an uncomfortable distance. I half expected a hand to reach out and start stroking his face. Mahomes flipped one to Samaj P. Ryan in the end zone, but he went down after a non-contact injury. They had to scrape him off the field. A season-ending injury that nope, he's fine. They injected him with stem cells from a Chick-fil-A. Well, why did you think they were closed on Sundays? Mayfield put the ball on his go-to receiver. That guy, whoever that guy is. This game went to overtime, where Baker Mayfield lost the coin toss. He might as well have sat crisscross applesauce and waited for death. He was never going to see that ball again. The Chiefs worked their way down the field and shoved a heavy cream in for six. A painful ending for Baker Mayfield, who played with the heart of a lion. He could never go back to that zoo. Patrick Mahomes doesn't like to share the spotlight. They put him in a double box with himself. What's it like to be the GOAT, Mr. Mahomes? Please, Mr. Mahomes is my father. Call me Patrick Mahomes the second. Now's a great time to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. Every time somebody does, an orphan gets adopted. You can't fact check that, but why risk it? Unless you hate orphans. You don't hate orphans, do ya? You know, Batman was an orphan. True story. Till he was adopted by justice. Yummy. This week, the pretzel goes to Saquon Barkley. No matter how many times I watch this play, I still can't understand it. It's like watching a magic trick. Both how and why did he do this? It's amazing. I can't wrap my brain around it. Kudos, Magic Barkley. I don't know what they're putting in your Cheerios, but it's working. Thank you so much for watching Shut Up Football. We do appreciate it. Please leave your comments below. Say hi to your mom for me, and we'll catch you next week. Peace. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. It sound right, boy.